I'm not here to race actually. I'm here to break down. So I have always wanted to know, and I'm not the only one, am I? What really does happen when you run out of battery? And I'm not gutsy enough to try it out on a road, but I am gutsy enough to try it out on a racetrack. And not with one, but with four EVs. So I've got a flashing battery light on the dashboard, literally no miles, and it says 3%. It is a bit nerve wracking because I don't know what it's actually going to do, if it's actually going to just stop or coast 30 miles an hour around Thruxton. I'm rocking it. The general advice is not to go under 10%. 1%. The fact is, yeah, we have been asked if we could possibly avoid it not to break down between numbers, the numbers that are around the circuit between numbers 11 and 14, because that will impede the runway. It's just like, you know what's going to happen, don't you? So breaking down in an EV isn't quite as straightforward as it is breaking down in a normal vehicle. So you have some can be towed, some can't be towed at all. In fact, I think this one, the Zoe, has to have its front two wheels lifted in order for it to be towed. Um, so the best advice I can give you is actually just check for your own car, whether it can or can't. So just so that you know in advance if something happens. Oh, limited performance. That's just flashed up. There's a little picture of a turtle come up now. There you go, now it's slowing down. Okay, this is the kind of turtle mode I was expecting actually. The most I can get, doesn't matter how much I put my foot on it, the most I can get is 30. And it, in fact, is slowing down. 29, 28, 27. The car is doing that on its own. We are really screeching to a halt here, seven. Um, it's very calm, collected. It's like the vehicle's taken over. This is what happens when you break down in an EV because you neglected to charge your battery. Zero miles an hour for the first time. Zero, two. Oh, it started going backwards. Did you see that? Zero miles an hour. Yep, we're done. We're done, put on the brake. There you go, zero miles an hour. That's what happens then. You just, well, in the, in the Zoe, you're just kind of gliding into, but, but we've still got everything working. So even though I've broken down and run out of battery, the hazards are still working. Okay, so when I first got in, we had 3%. It was showing zero miles. And we've done about 25 miles around the circuit. Only for the last couple of miles did it start cutting me down. And then really only for the last half a mile to a mile did it really start restricting me. So that there's, it's almost like there's two parts to turtle mode. The first part is getting you to around about 30 miles an hour and you can't go much above that. And then the second part of, of it was really right down to like five miles an hour and below. Um, so it's really interesting uh, because we had way more miles than I thought we would. But now comes the tricky bit, rescuing it. So tell me wh what exactly you do. Here I am, I've ran, it's taken me a while, but I've actually <laughs> run out of battery. Okay, so we've got a 7.2 kilowatt charger. What we do is we come to whichever location you've run out of charge, wherever that might be, 
It's a 24-7 service and it operates nationally throughout, throughout the UK and we will charge you at the roadside. And it's not a rapid charge, it's a fast charge, it's the sort of fast end of the uh, standard AC charging range. Um, so that means in real terms half an hour should give you about 10 miles, depending on the vehicle. 10 miles is just a little bit, isn't it? If you want more, we will give you more. The, as, as, the way we work it is our drivers have got generally Zap Map, uh, one of these sort of apps, so that they can see where the nearest charging point is to where you've broken down or run out of charge, I should say. Um, so they'll make sure that you've got enough charge plus 50% in terms of mile range to get to that charge point. Right, so we are in the iPACE. We have two miles left. And the reason we got it so low on this one is because there's no obvious uh, percentage. So whereas before with the Zoe, we were going around for a long time with no miles before it actually did run out. This one is gonna be different. So this screen here has gone in terms of power. So the car is obviously doing what it can already to conserve power. But obviously I've still got information displayed on my dashboard. And there we are on zero. Stop safely, vehicle shutting down at zero miles. I mean, can't be much clearer than that, can it? But let's see what happens if we don't stop. Okay, I'm feeling some resistance here. I suspect as we go downhill that might change. So there's definitely a limit on the accelerator now. But I'm still getting the speed up, but that's partly because we're going downhill. But I'm not getting that same kind of acceleration as I was before. You've always got in the back of your mind, I think, with a car, I could push it. Um, and you know, there's usually someone around who will help you push if you've got stuck. That's not so easy in an EV. First of all, some of them are actually really heavy. And secondly, they're not easy to push. It doesn't work like that. So pushing is not your option. Pushing it to a safe place is not what you want to be doing in an EV. And some of them you can't push at all. <laughs> Okay, I'm feeling it as we zip past the aircraft landing point. Am I? You know, I've got my foot, now I've got my foot to the floor and we are decelerating slowly. 30, 29, 28. Stop safely, electrical fault detected. I think this could be us. Electrical fault, yeah, you ran out. <laughs> Vehicle shutting down. And that's that. And if I don't put my foot on the brake, we'll go. There's nothing more. So uh, that's the eye pace. Again, there's, there's no scary jolting, but there was a definite, the vehicle's taken over and is now bringing you slowly to a halt. Um, which could, you know, certainly be scary if you're surrounded by other traffic. Um, and that would be a real worry. So, all you know, all to say, you just don't want to do this, not in the safety of a circuit. You must have come across some interesting scenarios, I guess. The, the worst thing is if you do run out on a roundabout or on a fast road, and my advice to everybody is, look, when you start to see you're getting really low on range, think about where you're going to pull over into a place of safety, uh, because, if you know you've got five miles left and you're not going to reach where you need to get to, that's when you can plan and safely get into a position where we can arrive and give you a charge and get you on either home or to a charger. There are other rescue companies yes. out there and they're pretty big, you they know, are. I mean, it's there's three majors, aren't yes, there? It's a very Have they not got us covered? So at the moment, the recovery industry is using the traditional, using flatbed trucks to recover electric vehicles. Um, 
works perfectly well, um, but there are some drawbacks to it. Ten generally, you tend to wait a, little, a, a bit longer if you've got an EV because most local recovery operators won't necessarily have more than one vehicle that's suitable to pick up an EV. So if that vehicle's doing another job, you could be waiting you know, several hours before it can get to you. Um, and then there's the other point that a lot of people don't really want to see their nice brand new car being put on the back of a truck and then having to get into the recovery truck to go to the charge point. We think this is a neater solution. Um, the RAC are the only other people who have got a similar sort of model to ours. Um, so at the moment we're, we're still fairly in, in fairly rarefied company, there aren't too many of us doing it. So we're just about to come up to lap four with no percent and no miles. So this one really is giving us a nice buffer even though you wouldn't want to push it this far, especially not if you're on a road. So what's surprising me is, you know, I'm probably around about 10 miles past the point of 0% and 0 miles being displayed on the dash. And I'm not getting any, you know, apart from the one message I had, I'm not getting any more messages about, hey, you're getting dangerously close to losing power the screen's still going, the fan's still going, everything's still working. There's nothing being shut off here and there's nothing telling me, you know, you're, you're really in a dangerous, potentially dangerous spot. Okay, so there it is. The first little bit of resistance as I came out of the chicane and accelerated and turtle mode. So I've got your little turtle orange sign and a warning turtle mode is now activated it's still doing it it's still going up in speed but really resisting it it's harder and slower to do it oh <laughs> might even be able to get us into the pits shall I do that shall I yeah that's it there's nothing left they're pulling into the pits that's classic. <laughs> they really are very slowly going into the pits. Well, that's a relatively, you know, sudden stop, actually. Um, but yeah, we're not actually going to make it into the pits. <laughs> Just nearly into the pits. Um, that was quite interesting. That was a very different experience. So in the Nissan, you know, it keeps you going for as long as it can, clearly. And then you do, well, you know, I came through the chicane and went to accelerate again. And that's when it said, right, no, that's it. That's your lot. Um, and then the deceleration was, was pretty quick. Um, still not jolty, but pretty quick. And so what's interesting is it's taken itself into neutral and I cannot, I have not got the option to put it into drive at all so park it is then and we'll be calling the rescues again tell me about i mean we've joked a lot about oh well, i forgot to charge my battery oh i've run out of battery because it's something that makes us all slightly nervous and therefore slightly giggly <laughs> but it is actually quite a serious thing to do you don't want to be doing it too often no, no. I mean, there are implications for the vehicle's battery itself. It's not good to do it regularly to the battery, much like any piece of electronic equipment. If you run these lithium battery packs right down to nothing, it's not good for them. But, but more to the point, it's, it's going back to that original point, it's about your safety on the road. You know, you, if you let it run that low and you run out in a, in a, in a dangerous spot, which is quite possible, you're, you're in danger and, and it's just not worth it. Um, just plan as much as you can. And if you do make a mistake, or, or as I said earlier, if you find you've planned properly, but that public charger isn't working, just, just give yourself that little bit of buffer, buffer room. What happens now? So you've come to rescue me yes. in the middle. <laughs> we've come to rescue in the middle of a slightly unusual uh, slightly scenario. Unusual. <laughs> no, indeed. So we've come to rescue. So, so what's going to happen is Andy is going to connect up to your Zoe and he's going to get some charge in there. There are a number of things Andy's going to do first though. He's going to make sure that the vehicle's um, ECU system is switched off and sleeping. Because, Tell me what that is. Well, the engine control unit on that vehicle will still be using power 
Um, so Andy's going to make sure that all of that's turned off so that when he's putting that charge in, it's getting the quickest and most effective charge into the vehicle. So it just means it's quicker for us and for you to get back behind the wheel. So we've gone into power limited turtle mode. 0% one mile. No, now naught miles. So 0% naught mile power limited turtle mode. I'm not feeling the limitation on the power. It's really interesting because it's saying power limited, but doesn't feel any different. To be honest, I'm a bit lost count. <laughs> but it's got to be around about 15, 20 miles that we've been going before I'm now, you know, we've been in turtle mode and I'm now getting the big slowdown. We are slowing down. I mean, but we've been on naught miles and naught percent for ages. Oh, I might actually break down in the chicane. I don't know why that's exciting to me. Breaking down in the chicane at Thruxton. Oh, Ooh. that was the first time a jolt has happened because it engaged the park brake of its own accord. Which, you know, frankly, we had enough warning. With It wasn't like a jolt out of nowhere. We were right down to practically zero miles an hour and then it put the park brake on. Well, that's another car out of batteries then. <laughs> what a great fun day at Thruxton. Thank you very much uh, to all the team here for helping us out. So what's in, what all those cars have in common when you actually do run out of batteries is it's, it's a controlled, measured stop. And I think what I've always been frightened of is suddenly the car goes out of control or suddenly just shuts down completely and there's nothing and you can't steer and you can't do anything. It's not quite like that. You don't want to get yourself in, even into this situation where you're in the buffer zone and you find that your car has taken over and it's stopping itself. But if you do, through no fault of your own, get into that situation, don't panic, stay calm, it's going to be a slow measured stop and just make sure you're safe.